So our project so far is our home screen works, art. We need to fill in the content, but we can do that later. Uh, we've got the PC screen. And then the art screen, we've got our calendar panel and our catalog. On our PC, these buttons don't do anything, so let's work on the PC screen a bit. And uh, we need these buttons to work. So scroll down to about line 109. 109 or so. Mine says section data roll page PC. Even though we've got the meaningful elements of article and heading and so forth, it's still pretty easy to get lost where you're at in the code. Here I know because I don't have a very complex project, that's the end of the art section. But as we get more complex, we might lose track of what ends and what begins. We can tell what begins pretty easily because we've got a data title and an ID. So let's say instead we want um, to also delineate what just ended. So you, this is optional, of course, but you can add comments. I'm going to add a comment on line 108. Remember, that's the tag for comments there. I want to add a comment here that says end of our page or something. So I can quickly then see, I can quickly then see what has ended at that line. So end of art. And then maybe that's my way to mark it. This is of course a comment, so I can write anything I want here. But I'm marking to myself that this is the end of the art section. <coughs> Okay, so then the PC section starts, and we'll notice on line 112, we have an unordered list, data role list view, and then uh, next line is a list item, data role list divider. So that's how that's working. So on line 114, it says divider, but let's change that to say basic PC classes. So this is going to be a list of some basic, intermediate, and advanced PC classes. All the items there are simply list items, but they have a different meaning. This has a data role of list divider. The previous one has a data role of list view. And then a plain old button doesn't have a, a data role. Although this has a data theme C, which is actually not valid at the moment. This comes back to the Kodika prototype that we use. Remember the free version of Kodika? Uh, that was running with jQuery Mobile version 1.3. We're on 1.4. And on 1.4 they've removed these other data themes. So on line 116 change that data theme uh, to B. Line 124 also has a data theme C and 129. So wherever you see where it says data theme C, change it to B. B uh, C is not valid. So we'll put A or B. Let's do, I'll do B. You have basic PC classes, that's the divider. And then the actual button line 117, and notice that has an href, so this will be <coughs> clickable, and it has a transition of slide, and the word button. Instead, we'll make up a class here, com101. Intro. Who's then got another divider? We'll call that intermediate PC classes. Question. Maybe you could copy all of that text from, from some other section? Nope, all of this was already here when we created our project in Kodika. Kodika wrote all of that for us. I'm not seeing any data theme in here. There are how many sections say data theme? Data theme. It's here and there, but it's definitely 
uh, we got it from the whole list view item. If you don't see data theme, you'll be okay. But as long as you see data role list view, you'll be okay. If you don't see data themes, it's okay. And so we have this list divider which I will now call uh, intermediate PC classes. And we'll make up also COM201. So one section of basic, one section of intermediate, COM201, COM202. These currently say href page 1, we'll need to fix that. Um, but 201, let's say Windows COM202 Mac. So we'll do Mac OS. I want a section for advanced computer classes. We didn't make one in Codica, but again, um, based on what we see here, we should be able to figure out how to create a new section, a new divider, and a new button. Sections are made from list items that have a data role of list divider and a role of heading. And then the buttons themselves are list items with a data theme, optional, but then a, a text. So line 133 ends my list item of COM202. After line 133, I want to add a list item pair, li. this is going to be a bullet point that then gets upgraded to a divider. So that list item needs data role list dash divider and then role heading. So that now it creates a new divider. We need some text there, of course. But uh, that's how the previous dividers are set up. Advanced PC classes. To see if you're on the right track, save it and run it. And you should see a, br a a brand new divider at the very bottom without any buttons yet. We haven't made the buttons, but at least now we've got one more divider. So let's see if that works. Okay, so uh, the way this should look like, something like that. So choosing the data theme B gives us the dark palette. Well, if we change that to data theme A or we put nothing, it'll give us the light palette. So I'm going to put on the light palette, actually. It's too much of a contrast. 
but there's a divider, basic PC, intermediate PC, advanced PC. We need one button here for an advanced class, an advanced class offering. Based on what's already there, we should be able to figure it out. So next line, we need another list item. It's a pair. And then I'm seeing that there's an href. So we'll just write it the same way that the previous buttons are set up. Right, that's the, that's the that's the style list items, an A tag, and then the text. And the A tag will be filled in just like that up there. It still works because it inherited the design from the previous element. So if I added data theme B as the very first link, then anything that follows next will inherit it. Um, hmm? Yes, even though I closed it, jQuery Mobile will still automatically sort of spread that down to the lower levels. Did you set a data theme A, or did you do you not have any data themes? Hmm. Okay, I wouldn't worry about it because um, I'm going to change that to A anyway, and A looks like the white, the one that you have most likely. But what's supposed to happen is it doesn't inherit it. So this will create a new button called COM301 Linux, and when we click on it, it will transition us with a slide. It's pointing to not anything correct yet. There's no such thing as page one. It's trying to point us to a, a, a screen full of content called page one, which we don't have yet. We'll create that in a moment. but. Um, let, let's fix this thing about the, the data themes. So, uh, for example, it is explicitly saying data theme A or B, perhaps, but um, you usually don't need to call that unless, unless necessary because of this inheritance. There's, uh, by default, data theme A at the top level, which would be section. So everything below it automatically gets a data theme. If I choose a different one, it should then change. My point is, I don't need it to be different from its parent. So actually, wherever we see data theme B, I don't want any data theme actually. So back up where you've got data theme C or B or A or whatever, and just delete that. Delete it from your list items. Yeah, I didn't like it actually. It was it was too dark, and if I choose A, they'll look light. But if I remove them, they will still inherit data theme A. What's that? <laughs> so let's save it, and you should see now we've got a new button. It doesn't really go anywhere yet. 
and it should all go back to the default theme A, hopefully. And what we need to do logically here is, well, these are buttons that want to go somewhere. They want to go to a page of this content. So we will fix these hrefs, they're all wrong, and then we will create actual sections or pages to display this content. So I just wrote page one here, but it's wrong. We want this to point to something that is going to be referencing that uh, com3 page. So instead of pound page one, let's call this uh, ADV com, advanced computer classes. So then if I back up to 130 instead of page one, we can call that int, int com, intermediate computers. And then we can back up to the first one and we can call it BAS com basic computers. We can call those anything we want. We can call it advanced computer classes. But I'm keeping them short and consistent. So back on 130, int com, intermediate computers. I'm going to call that one also intcom because both of those relate to the same intermediate classes, but in theory we could have intcom windows, intcom mac, and those will point to two different pages. And then on intro, base, com, basic computers. These pages don't exist yet, so if I try to click them, either I would get an error or nothing would happen. So what I need to do then is create a new section with data rolls of pages and IDs of base com, int com, and advanced com. We'll do this at the end of the document. And this, honestly, I haven't tested this far enough to see if it's going to behave like I've expected it to. My concept is, well, these are going to be new sections. We've done this before on other semesters. These are going to be new sections. You're going to have IDs of these. But what I haven't done before is we've got this persistent nav bar that's always visible, right? The header and the footer. Um, I'm going to see what happens when we put it outside of those boundaries. Because I don't want the footer and that nav bar to be visible when we're on these sub pages. I only want, like, my example, which I already closed. But my examples aren't going to show those. So anyway, if it doesn't make sense, let's do it and let's see what happens. Let's scroll past section and footer. Let's go all the way past the footer. And we'll create a new section. Data roll page. ID basecom the basic computer classes if you go back to the wireframe that we the wireframes that that I drew remember we had um, interface design a and B and C and D and one of those uh, maybe B or something was an interface that only had a simple uh, simple basic back button on the top it didn't have a footer it didn't have the whole complex nav bar. That's going to be one of these. So inside of section here, let's see how this will work. We'll add a header here and the article. It 
This is going to be a screen full of content for my basic classes. And I want it to have its own unique header and, of course, the article. So under header, we need the data role of header. We mentioned this one a while ago, but we also want another attribute here, uh, a simple back button that takes us back to the previous page where we came from. There's one built in, and it was this one that was data-add-back-btn equals true. This will add a back button. This will add a button that takes us back to the previous page, which will be the PC screen. If you recall, uh, some of you, when you were testing this a while ago, you were refreshing your screen and then there was no back button. And I had said, well, you're trying to refresh on a screen that has no history. This works because you start on the PC screen, go to the basic computer screen, and there's history there, so back button can take you back. But if you refresh your web browser when you're on the basic screen, there's no history to go back to, so the back button doesn't exist. This needs a heading of basic PC classes. I always call it basic. We know we're under basic PC classes. We've clicked the button. This is basic classes. And then article. I just want to see if it works so far. Just a simple Heading 2 of uh, Learn Computer Basics. Let's save it and run it and see if it works so far. We've got a section with an ID and we've got a button that should take us to that section. So let's see if it works. Oh, one more thing. Article. We didn't put in article the, the data role. But we're not using data role for article. We're using something else that I haven't memorized yet either. Um, role main class UI content. Role main class UI-content. That one's built into jQuery Mobile. And that basically serves the purpose when we used to use data role equals content. In the beginning, we used data role content, now, but. Now we use role and main. It's a class name of CSS, but it's built into jQuery Mobile. And unfortunately, what I have to say is that's just the way it is. The jQuery Mobile specification says whenever you have article, you want to use role main and class UI content. That's just the way it is, because that defines what the what the main part of the content is, the main part of the screen. So if you go, if you run it and you, you'll see your buttons, I took away the data theme so they look more consistent. And then now you click on COM1 and you get this slide animation, Learn basic computers. You've got this heading and a back button. I'm not quite liking it though, because if you look at the example of the class, on the, under the example, you go to computers, you have the same thing, you click on it, it slides over, or 
animates, whatever. And then you've got the back button and no footer and no header. Click there and you see the same thing. That's more what I want. Our result is that it's keeping the header and the footer and adding an extra header. And that's what I'm saying, that I need to research the documentation a little bit more how to fix that. The reason it's happening is because our code, we set this up a while ago, we've got the footer and the header existing outside of sections, and we've got that little JavaScript we wrote last time, and therefore that's making it behave like this. I'm sure there's ways to remove it once we go to a page where we don't want that, but I have to look it up. When I was teaching this class for the last several years, we didn't do it this way. This is the first time we're doing it. You guys are my guinea pigs. <laughs> this is the first time I do it this way, and it seems to be working except now, and then another thing that I know is coming up. So I need to figure out the best way to do it, because the alternative is to have the header and the footer on every section. And that'll work perfectly, but then we're going to deal with a lot of redundant code, and people would hate that. So people would hate too much redundant code, and people hate, well, why doesn't it work now? Can't make people happy. So it's close enough, it's not exactly what I want, because I could then click on art and it goes to art and I really wanted to just have a back button to go back to this but we'll figure that out later if that worked for you then take a moment to if you can do this on your own try now to make these other three work both of these are going to link to the same intcom and this one is going to link to advanced.com based on what you've already done, you can copy and paste a little bit and maybe figure it out. So try it on your own. Try to link it, and then I'll do it. But try on your own first. Uh, raise your hand if you need any help up to this point, and then we'll see about going further. Let me zoom into my code.
I'll be with you just one moment. Um, so the 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 thing here that uh, hopefully you figured out was well, all you need to do is copy a section, and paste it, and change the ID, and that creates a brand new page. I haven't done it yet, but that would be the idea that I would do. And then you you can create new pages by simply just copying and pasting existing content, and then it'll work. So. We'll basically wrap at that point, and um, when we come back next time, there's still a few things I want to do with the app, such as I want to see about uh, creating the pop-up screen from our example. Ladies, I'm still talking. Ladies, I'm still talking. Um, the, the home here, remember on this example, we've got this pop-up happening. I, we want to do that. And that won't be too complicated, but I am seeing that what will happen is these headings and navbar items will still stick around. It'll look a little odd. This pop-up will happen, but it'll still show these these buttons here. So again, I'm going to try to figure it out before we come back next time. But we'll we'll make this pop-up happen, and we'll we'll get this to to work. Um, at least this customized thing, and maybe the directions. If not, well, we've got part two of the class. And in part two, we can do that and everything else we still need to do. So it's a three-month-long course, and uh, we're getting there little by little. Question? Um, when we come back next week, from when we're supposed to register, are we just going to come to this class and do a really big uh, first week? Or do we need to do any kind of like prerequisite for this class? Nope. We, we just continue from this class. Okay. You don't need anything extra. We will continue this project as far as we get to it from this Thursday. We will continue it. I don't know if there's going to be brand new people showing up, 
but uh, we're going to start from this point and um, we'll, we'll just continue. And I'll mention that again also on Thursday just to remind us. Question? Okay, uh, we're going to do lab time in just a moment. So if you got it to work at this point, uh, very good. We're going to wrap up and have lab time until the usual. And I'm going to put my code in there in just a moment. I want to get my screens to work here. Then I'll put it in the network, and then I'll help people. So remember to sign in. If you want to sign out, you can, and we'll do it again next time.